Hello and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I am on large day below. Many thanks for joining us. And you can follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta slash live.ng or any of our social media handles displayed on your screen for update. Now, in its determination to ensure that no Nigerian citizen is left to be consumed by the crisis in Sudan, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has evacuated additional 126 stranded Nigerians back home. This brings the number of stranded Nigerians evacuated to 2,660 so far. Elias Ali Akubu reports that out of the latest number, 26 are children. So far, about 24 million people have been affected by the crisis. Since the eruption of the crisis in Sudan, former President Muhammad Buhari approved the immediate evacuation of stranded Nigerians from that country. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has not arrested on its hours in evacuating Nigerians trapped in the war-torn country. The Director General of the agency, Mustafa Habib Ahmed, who was represented by the Director of Special Duties, Dr. Onimode Bandele, at the latest evacuation, is optimistic that the agency will not rest until all Nigerians are evacuated from Sudan. And the success we are seeing today is because the federal government supported us and the DG of NEMA, Mustafa Habib Ahmed, has been on top of the situation. I thank the federal government of Nigeria, Dr. Ahmed Bola Tinumbu. Don't wel welcome back to Nigeria now safely. Dr. Bandele also revealed that another flight is being expected with more Nigerians to be brought back home. In Abuja, Ilyasu Aliakubu, NTA News. Center for Transparency Advocacy CTA is urging the Independent National Electoral Commission INEC to ensure that the challenges observed in the conduct of the 2023 general elections are not repeated in the three of cycle governorship elections in November this year. These formed part of resolutions reached during a post of the 2023 general elections. Timothy Yusuf reports. The Center for Transparency Advocacy and Election Observer Group believes that it is crucial to acknowledge the hurdles faced during the February and March 2023 elections, urging Nigerians to also focus on the positives that emerged from the polls and ensure they are sustained. The fact that we have an election where the winner came up with 8 million votes and the following votes where 6 million altogether put in, say, about 50 million votes, means that we are now having the real people who are voting in the country, unlike in the past, where you had the numbers without the people coming out to vote. Why are we talking about those things that didn't go well and not giving credit for the things that went excellently well? INEC had fixed the Mayosa, Imo, and Kuki State's governorship elections for November 11, 2023. CTA is hopeful that the elections would be an improvement with lessons learned from the previous elections. The Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room is similarly following up on its report of the 2023 general elections, demanding urgent national electoral reforms to reignite citizens' confidence in Nigeria's electoral process. Timothy Yusuf. News. The Joint International Heads of Missions have adjourned the general election in most parts of Sierra Leone as relatively free, fair and peaceful, even though some setbacks occasioned by the late arrival of materials, conflicting voters' registers, insufficient election materials and overcrowded polling centres in some polling units. Charles Alpha reports. The Commonwealth Observation Mission, African Union, ECOWAS and the West African Elders Forum at a briefing shared the same realities from the fields of elections which they say can help improve integrity of the process for future polls in Sierra Leone. The ECOWAS election observation team monitored about 337 polling units with the Commonwealth theme 
overseeing the five regions. The missions acknowledge it is a work in progress and have advised their stakeholders to exercise some level of patience to allow the electoral body carry out its collation without any interference. The major takeaway from the Joint International Heads of Missions post-election uh, briefing is the fact that they all agreed that the election was largely successful. And if there is anything, Sierra Leone can only leverage on the recommendations that will be dished out by these heads of missions for future elections. After the briefing, the team was at the Sierra Leonean Independent Commission for Peace and National Cohesion, where they emphasized the need for continued peace after the election in Sierra Leone. Everybody has voted. That's what we verified. The most important thing is also that people are allowed to vote. Facets of the society, people have tried their level best to work for this peace and want to make sure that this peace is maintained. The missions are due to meet with the electoral body on the state of collation. From Freetown, Charles, Alpha, and Tia News. Muslim pilgrims in Makkah, Saudi Arabia, are to begin movement to Munna this evening to observe major religious rites for this year's Hajj exercise. A sequel to this, the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria says it has achieved a record time success on airlift exercise for the first time in 10 years, with no single case of any contingent left behind. Correspondent Usman Ali reports from Makkah. This is a pre-Arafat conference with all stakeholders in Hajj operation, including Islamic scholars. The meeting is for appraisal on the airlift exercise and highlights on next steps for a heat-free Hajj. The National Hajj Commission of Nigeria says it is reinventing itself for the best outing, just as Saudi authorities adopt new strategies for safety of the pilgrims. Minus those who may be sick or indisposed, we are confident to say every person who had the right documents had been brought to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for this year's Hajj. Our responsibility now is to ensure that as we move near the day of Hajj proper, which is at Arafah and Mina and Muzdalifa, to ensure that the Muslims, pilgrims, indeed are able to do their rights successfully. Nigeria's ambassador to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Ehayalawal, and others analyzed the recent challenges and breakthroughs. In the end, they all agree that all components must work together to achieve the target. For those states compromise the rules on welfare and health condition of the pilgrims, the Hajj Commission says there will be sanctions. Now the attention is how the return of the pilgrims back home after Hajj is going to be. In Makkah, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Usman Aliu, NTA News. Now let's join Lagos where Adiola is standing by and we'll re-establish a contact with Usman in Mecca. Adiola, it's over to you. Thank you, Olajide. The Nigerian Army College of Logistics and Management has actualized the Memorandum of Understanding signed between the Nigerian Army and ECOWAS Commission with the successful conduct of a training organized for middle cadre officers in operational level logistics in ECOWAS peace support operations. This was made known during the graduation ceremony of the 2020-2023 set of Nigerian Army students officers held at the Nigerian Army School of Logistics and Management or John Lagos a Macau reports hereby confirm you individually and severally the award passed logistics staff course these 34 Nigerian Army students officers having completed 24 weeks of rigorous training and intense academic exercise were also inducted into the National Institute of Logistics and Supply Management and the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport. I will myself, myself, 
This badge of a logistics staff course had inclusion of practical logistics experience scheme in their training. This, the commandant of the Nigerian Army School of Logistics and Management said, was designed to equip middle cadre officers with the requisite professional skills in the acquisition of military hardware necessary for the provision of efficient logistics support to the Nigerian Army. We took a practical approach to the students going into institutions to provide and prefer um, solutions to practical problems on the ground. The second thing was the capacity and ability of the college to activate a memorandum of understanding that had existed for the last 10 years with the ECOWAS Commission. Representative of the Chief of Army Staff, who is the General Officer Commanding 81 Division, noted that the training is part of the Army's support to the present administration's quest in tackling security challenges. The Army and indeed the Armed Forces of Nigeria do not joke with issues of logistics because they are the life wire of every military operation. This is the think tank center where such thoughts are giving a very critical thinking. The training, which is in line with the directive of the Nigerian Army Headquarters, also had various categories of awards presented to outstanding student officers in Lagos, Amaka O, NTA News. Engineering profession, information and communication technology, ICT, must be in tandem with evolving development for it to deliver on the demand of the ever-changing world. This was the focus of the lecture delivered by the Vice Chairman of the Nigerian Communications Commission, Professor Umar Dambata, while receiving an award for his contribution to the engineering profession. Larry Belay has the details. It was a gathering of seasoned engineers who are heads and captains of notable organizations, including Professor Umar Dambata, the CEO of the Nigerian Communication Commission, being fated by his colleagues. The president of a renowned engineering association, Professor Owalu, described the annual dinner and awards as a platform for setting new goals and recognition of outstanding performance. Uh, the new generation of engineers are the software engineers. These are engineers that are looking at solutions, digital solutions. Digitalization is in every aspect of the economy. The guest speaker, who is a head of a financial establishment represented, re-emphasized the utilization of ICT in engineering. If you look at most of the best programmers in the world, they are mostly engineers, right? So there's a lot that can happen between engineers and um, ICT um, professionals. Outstanding members and organizations who had contributed immensely to the development of engineering profession in all facets, including the CEO of the Nigerian Communication Commission, Professor Umar Dambata, were recognized. This way. Okay. I'm, I'm humbled by this recognition, but um, it, I'm sure, means a lot more to the entire members of staff of the Nigerian Communications Commission. Um, for whom I'm dedicating this award. The NCC boss, a telecommunication engineer himself, believes the engineering profession will continue to be one of the driving force for fast-tracking the socio-economic development of the nation. In Lagos, Larry, Bilei, NTA News. Be reminded that you can follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on the screen for updates nationwide. We'll continue after this break with Abu Bakr in Meiduguri. Stay with us. We shall defend the nation from terror and all form of Criminality that threatens the peace and stability of our country. Security shall be top priority of our administration because neither prosperity nor justice can prevail amid insecurity and violence. Skill is key to your professional growth in the competitive broadcast media industry. 
Take advantage of the following programs specially packaged by NTA Television College Jaws to upgrade your skill. Drama Production Workshop. Date 3rd July to 21st July 2023. Three weeks. Intermediate Online News Reporting Skills. Date 24th July to 11th August 2023. Three weeks. The course fee for the two-week course is 120,000 Naira, while the fee for the three-week course is 150,000 Naira only. Accommodation inclusive. All courses will hold at NTA Television College near Old Government House, Rayfield, Jaws. For further inquiries, please call 0803-079-5335 or 0806-98. 09807 NTA Television College Jaws training you to be the best you want to be. Registrar announcer. We are Inter Party Adversary Council, IPAC. We are political parties. We are the pathway to political power. IPAC, in line with its core mandate, is carrying out a peer review mechanism for elected political office holders. Performance of the President of Nigeria, state governors, state and national assembly members will be assessed comparatively. This will trigger healthy competition amongst our elected politicians to deliver dividends of democracy like good votes, good health care delivery system good schools, full employment, security, and so on. This prestigious program will soon be shown live on television stations across Nigeria. IPAC, deepening and consolidating democracy. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NTA International is with you. In your living room, office, and everywhere, anywhere. We provide a company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview Channel 264 or live streaming via www.visiontv.co.uk. Application for iOS or Android. Intelsat 901-332.5 degrees east. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. us up to this moment on nationwide and this is Medugri Zonal Network Center. Let's move on now. Strategies to reduce drug demand and harmful effects of illicit substances has become a major concern among stakeholders in Borno State to prevent criminalities and social vices. This was identified during a three-day training for patent and proprietary medicine vendors organized by Borno State Government in collaboration with Africa Development Bank as part of activities ahead of this year's International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. Zainab Adam will now tell us more. Drug abuse is clear and present global public health issue. A 2019 research conducted by United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, UNODC, shows that the prevalence of drug abuse and misuse in Nigeria is approximately five times the global prevalence rate, posing a threat to the growth and development of the society. As such, Borno State Government, in collaboration with Africa Development Bank, under the Inclusive Basic Service Delivery and Livelihood Empowerment Integrated Program, Program organized this three-day training for 250 pharmacy and patents medicine vendors to rid the society of burden of drug abuse. Administering the right dose at right frequency with good storage condition of drugs is necessary for the well-being of all, as stressed by experts. A lot of these people, they are not well trained. They just venture into the practice of selling drugs without proper training. So we feel that with this training, we are going to empower the owners of these patent medicine shops so that they do the right thing. The 250 pharmacy technicians and patent and proprietary medicine vendors thanked the organizers of the training for equipping them with the life-saving knowledge. They have taught us how we are going to refer patients Unanimous decisions reached include a six-month monitoring and tracking of the participants' activities to ensure adherence to laws guiding the practice of drug dispensing, storage, and disposal, among others. In my degree, Zainab Adam, NTA News. 
Away from that now, to tell you that contributing to the health needs of the people in Borno State that suffered from the more than a decade-long insurgency, especially those rescued from captivity and returnee communities, has remained the focus of most humanitarian organizations. In that light, Christian Blind Mission CBM International has presented hospital equipment to the Borno State government to complement its health care delivery programs. Here is Pauline Kojivana with the rest of the story. The presentation of the hospital equipment was part of sensitization and awareness campaigns on gender-based violence, GBV, mental health and disability inclusion in four targeted areas of MMC, Goza, Jerry and Konduga local government. With the theme, together we can stop GBV, promote mental health and support people with disabilities. Had CBM and WIN supplied drugs and hospital equipment to support the medical needs of the people suffered so by the insurgency. Executive Director Win Comre Lucy Yunana said, in addition to the consumable and non-consumable hospital facilities, the organization also constructed a safe space for women and girls to discuss and share their issues for possible solutions. We have seen the effort of the state government, so we felt there's a need for us too to complement by supplying all this equipment with the support of our donor, that the CPM. Family Secretary, Minister of Health, Dr. Mohamed Guluzi, described the gesture as enemies and called on other humanitarian actors to replicate the same. We value this kind of support because government cannot provide everything. And we have a number of facilities that are deficient in uh, infrastructure and equipment. Similar gesture was done in Goza, local government area, where the chairman transition committee, Abdullahi Denjato, expressed delight for the medical support, saying it is timely in view of the fact that his people are still coming out from captivity and in need of medical attention. CBM, in collaboration with WIN, have pledged on relentless support through livelihood and other emergency interventions to complement government in meeting the needs of the people occasioned by the Boko Haram insurgency in Borno State. In Meduguri, Paul in Kujavana, NTA News. And those are the latest stories. At this time, from Meduguri, let's now return to Olajide in Abuja for more reports for us this evening. Many thanks, Abu Bakr from Meduguri there. And as we have re-established contact with uh, Usman, let's head straight to Makkah to join uh, Usman there to keep us uh, up to speed on uh, preparations for the Hajj. Now, uh, Usman, how ready are Nigerian pilgrims for the climax of the Hajj rite? Uh, Usman, can can you join with your audio, please? Because we can't hear you. Join with your audio. No, I I, I, I can't still I can't still hear you, Usman. Ah, well, I guess the who come back to Usman when he's fully prepared for us. Moving on to curb road crashes and avoidable traffic gridlocks on the highways, the Corps Marshal for the Road Safety Corps, Tauda Libyu, has directed the mobilization of adequate logistics and personnel for the 2023 Eid al-Kabir celebration to enhance visibility and guarantee safe travels for all road users before, during and after the celebration. A special patrol operation has been scheduled to commence from 26th June and to, to be terminated and 1st July 2023. In a statement, the Corps Marshal equally mandated that the following objectives must be achieved in the special operations, reduction in road traffic crashes, road traffic fatalities and road traffic injuries, prompt response to road traffic crash victims, engagement of robust public education and enlightenment as well as speedy removal of obstructions from the highways. Jigawa State Government is providing an enduring solution to the annual flooding that destroys farmlands, houses and claimed lives in the affected areas in the state. 
This was uh, the assurance given by Governor Omar Namadi while inspecting the ongoing flood mitigation projects across the state. Mohamed Musa Askira reports. The governor was accompanied by the technical officers from the Ministry of Works and Transport, those of Environment and Water Resources, as well as the State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, to inspect the progress of work at the site. These giant embankments, among other preventive measures being provided by the state government in the flood-prone areas, are expected to mitigate the impacts of flooding on the residential and farmlands that drain the financial resources of the state and the victims in the aftermath of the annual disaster. Governor Uman Namadiri e his administration's commitments to the dredging of River Hadeja, addressing the problem of typhoid grass, among other identified challenges responsible for the destructive flooding in Jigawa to achieve flood destructive free rainy season in the state. We will continue to do this to ensure that until and unless we save our people from the, this problem of flooding in Jigawa state. The technical committee on flooding are on ground to also they are here to see what is happening and also to advise the government on the next line of action. The governor has visited some villages and towns in Ringim, Jahun, Miga, Hadeja, Guri, Aoyo and Kevin House local government areas where anti-flood related projects are ongoing which will soon be completed before the escalation of the rainy season that usually degenerates to flooding in the state. With these commitments, observers believe for the first time in recent years, farmers in Jigawa will have a seamless season farming. From duty, Muhammad Musa Skira, NTA News. Well, uh, let's join Usman Park as uh, we've been able to establish uh, contact with him. Now, Usman, how ready are Nigerian pilgrims for the climax of the Hajj rites? Uh, thank you, Ola, today. If you can hear me very well, I can get you not loud. But I can tell you that uh, Nigerian pilgrims are ready. They have been preparing to start this holy journey, which starts three hours from now. They will be moving to Mina, where they are going to start observing the spiritual rites of this holy hut. From there, they are going to move to Arafat after passing the night there. And I can tell you, all of them are ready. They are going to do the last shopping of what they are going to do meet at that particular place. You know, that place is somewhere else that you cannot go anywhere. It's like a sacred place where you are going into seclusion. All right, Usman, uh, are there challenges pilgrims may encounter? But the only challenge that the pilgrims are expected to face is that they are going to a different environment where they are not supposed to be moving anywhere. They will be controlled. So they are going to be kept at that place for about three days when the Hajj rise will be completed and they will start coming back to Mecca. So from now, I think the challenge that they are going to face there is the restriction. But I can tell you that uh, the Saudi authorities and Nigerian government have made adequate provisions to cater for their needs in terms of their welfare, food, water, toilets, and even medical facilities are provided there. All right, uh, just before I let you go, Usman, what measures have uh, the authorities, maybe uh, the Saudi authorities now put in place to ensure that uh, this exercise is smooth? Yeah, I think they are giving all the assurances. I can see a lot of security arrangements that have been put in place there, medical arrangements equally. All officials are ready and are willing to participate to ensure smooth patch exercise. All right, many thanks, Usman Ali, our correspondent there in Makkah. A mark in Nigeria had drugs and other illicit drugs, including meth, known as seized by the Kwego military cantonment have been destroyed at an isolated section of the Namani market. Ijoma Peter Mwate reports that this destruction was monitored by the Nigerian army and the internal security unit of Ebony State as part of measures to rid the state of illicit drugs. 
The exhibit, which included 10 bags of cannabis sativa, popularly known as Indian hemp, Mpurumiri, and other illicit drugs, were discovered through the efforts of the joint team of military police and other military elements of the Nkwego military cantonment, led by its commander, Lieutenant Colonel Sunday Atomode. Why setting the substances are placed, the Appointed State Commissioner of Internal Security commended the gallantry of the officers and men of Nkwego military cantonment. For inviting us to be a witness to it, it's a very leverage to us to know that we should work hard and make sure we eradicate crime in Ebony State. This is a feat that is done in Abak Lake. So will it be in various places and various communities in Ebony State. For the traders at the Mami Market, the feat is commendable in view of its negative impact on the youth of the area. I promise the state government and the military that they will not see anything in their um, or eyes or charity in this market again. We must put our hands on deck to make sure that we work in synergy with all the security agents. If other uniformed people have been doing this, at least we are going to reduce crime. The destruction of the drugs worth millions of Naira is part of efforts by the military police to sanitize the market in Apakaliki. Ijoma Pitawante, NTA News. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLA, has successfully intercepted two shipments of loud cannabis in Lagos State, totaling 5,344.1 kg. One seizure took place on the Ekbeleki Expressway involving a truck carrying 2,434.1 kg, while the other occurred at Alpha Beach, intercepting a boat loaded with 2,910 kg with multiple arrests made. Additionally, in various states, the NDLA apprehended individuals with significant quantities of skunk and cannabis, dismantled a cannabis farm, and arrested several suspects. Let's join what market where Jenny is standing by. Over to you, Jenny. Statistics are a valuable tool for policy and decision making for good governance is the focus of a two-day biannual meeting of the National Consultative Committee on Statistics in Port Harcourt. The meeting of the key players in statistics is to identify ways of boosting accuracy in data collection for good governance in Nigeria. Ijomo Gweke reports. Statistics plays a significant role in providing information for policy and decision making. This is the reason for the gathering of the National Consultative Committee on Statistics in Port Harcourt. They are aiming to collaborate with data generating agencies and other critical stakeholders in governance to drive the vision of improving the use of statistics in planning, monitoring and evaluation of government programs and projects. This government is keen, is interested in addressing the issue of unemployment and as such we deem it fit that we need to engage the uh, team economic team of the, this new uh, federal government participants were enlightened on new methods of data collection which create sustainable models for producing labor statistics that can stand the test of time this new concept captures various forms labor markets in line with global best practices that guarantee high quality data. In line with its policy trust, River State Government has also keyed into the use of statistical methodology and uniform standards to achieve its objectives. The government of River State has enacted a law for the establishment of the River State Bureau of Statistics, River State Statistics Law Number no. 2 of 2010, set up the River State Consultative which is coordinated in the Department of Statistics, Manpower and Research. The 2023 biannual meeting of the National Consultative Committee on Statistics, NCCS, is repositioning towards presentation of comprehensive reports for improved governance and development. In Portacot, Ijomu Gweke, NTA News. The strategic vision of the former chief of the naval staff Vice Admiral Awa Gambo for the Nigerian Navy and 
the Naval War College Nigeria towards boosting the morale of officers and ratings through the provision of conducive accommodation is receiving commendation. This was at the official inauguration of the Naval War College Nigeria Accommodation Quarters at Summit Hills, Calabar. Paul Abel reports. These are officers of the Nigerian Navy on sea protecting the territorial integrity and maritime domain of Nigeria. But while they are away on the field, their families back home should be well accommodated. It is against this background, the former chief of the naval staff in addressing the prevailing accommodation challenges confronting the Naval War College Nigeria. One year ago, started the construction of these quarters with others at its permanent site. This visionary leadership has now given birth to this facility comprising four by three bedroom, 12 by one bedroom, 24 by one bedroom, and 18 by self-contained type A and B flats for senior officers, officers, senior and junior rates. Guests of honor commended the outgoing CNS for the improvement on the Navy fleet and expressed optimism. The incumbent CNS will also raise the bar. Barely two and a half years at the helm of the Nigerian Navy as chief of the naval staff has transformed the Navy fleet from a fleet in being to a virile fleet that can ensure battle space dominance in homeland defense and regional security. This project no doubt will impact on the well-being and welfare of the college staff. It will equally impact positively on teaching and learning in the college. Other facilities at the quarters include boreholes, water storage tanks, water reticulation system, and house gate in Calabar. Paul Abel and Chris. That's the report from Port Harcourt. Nationwide will continue with charity in Ibadan after the break. You have to move from the point where you protect and defend your religion to a point where you also recognize the rights of the other person, of the other religion, and protect it. So if I am protecting my own territory and my own people and trying to emphasize their rights and protect their rights. I should also be thinking about how to protect the rights of the others. Both Islam and Christianity recognize and defer to God and both recognize the temporariness of the life of this world and that ultimately we all go back to God for the day of reckoning when everybody will render an account of his life on this temporary abode. On the show next week, we look at how the help we gave to our season six participants has touched and changed their lives forever. Zeta is a true example that anyone can make a difference in. And our new story is all about empowering the youth. The CDA and the community of Sari West in Igomo have a bold and ambitious plan to train and empower the youth. Dirty lives. Yes, sir. It's life. Once you lose hope, you lose life. Once people get lifted to a certain level, they start feeling godlike. What would you attribute this backwardness in education to in the not to date? I feel balai. What's right is right. What's wrong is wrong. wrong. The program is in reflections. in our very hands, we dare not let it sleep. We lift high this touch 
so that it might shine on every household and in every heart that calls itself Nigeria. We hold thee aloft because it lights our path with compassion, brotherhood, and peace. May this great light never extinguish. Jenny, and uh, welcome back to Abuja. Wife of the Acting Inspector General of Police, Elizabeth Kaudia Betokun, is engaging wives of police officers with a view to supporting their husbands in managing the home front while in the line of duty. Francis Farm reports that the IGP's wife also helps in unity among the Police Officers' Wives Association. This is the maiden engagement between the wife of the acting inspector general of police, Elizabeth Egbetokun, and the wives of police officers. The engagement centers around the home front, responsibilities that lies ahead of the women while their husbands are in the battlefield. And as their wives, we have the backbone that support them. My vision for POWA is to build upon the great work of our predecessors and take our organization to new heights. I will work with the leadership team to improve our capacity to serve our members and develop our programs to positively impact the lives of police officers and their families. Some piece of advice from the outgoing IGP's wife with regards to piloting the affairs of the association. Before Changa retires, I keep telling three of them, I say it has to be one of you. Please join hand and walk unity. And that is it. We need one another. The government protect, guide you, help you to take power to the top, top, top level. Meanwhile, before her final exit from POA, wife of the former IGP decorates and hands over the mantle of leadership to the wife of the 22nd indigenous IGP. Francis from NTA News. A multi-stakeholder and sectoral synergy towards enhancing food security and increasing understanding on the state of malnutrition in the face of climate change. In Nigeria, top recommendations are to policy dialogue for relevant actors in Abuja. Olusha Diago reports that the policy dialogue which also developed people-centered resolutions to ensure improvement in health outcomes is initiated by Nigeria Health Watch. For Nigeria's health watch, climatic extremes such as drought, poverty and conflict, top leading causes of food insecurity and this nutrition policy dialogue is to strengthen nutrition outcomes in the face of climate change. So each one of us, we play a very important role in shaping the tra trajectory of the nation's nutrition landscape. And it's an important opportunity for us to be to seize the opportunity to work collectively towards a future where no child suffers from hunger. Discussions drawn from the public and private sector, including civil society organizations, set an agenda of developing. There's a lot of uh, marketing and advertising that goes behind food that are high in salt and sugar. But the government has a role in creating and supporting other organizations to create demand for nutritious foods. We are properly able to benchmark what we need to do and track our progress as we start to achieve them. We've talked about the need to empower women and youth. The panelists unanimously called for an urgent climate actions in Nigeria to mitigate the rising effects of climate change and improve food security, as well as put the country on the path of achieving sustainable development goal two, is zero hunger, and three, good health and well-being by 2030. In Abuja, Olusheye Adiago, NTN News. 
Sustaining the trajectory in fluid security through local production remains topmost in the priority list of President Tinubu's administration. In this regard, the federal government, in partnership with the International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD, is boosting food production in Nasarawa State with the distribution of farm inputs to more than 350 farmers. Charity Ashiki reports. These farmers are usually at the center of Nigeria's battle for achieving food security, thereby placing them as victims of agricultural threats, which leads to the drop in agricultural produce across the state and country. To address this year's challenges, the federal government, in partnership with the International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD, is distributing a total of 1,800 kilograms of improved rice seeds, 1,650 bundles of cassava stems, 402 bags of fertilizers, as well as 156 liters of selective and non-selective herbicides to 363 farmers. Our collective commitment was to mobilize actions towards improving the livelihoods of small, older rural farmers on sustainable basis. Beneficiaries express appreciation for making their farming process easy and affordable. According to agricultural experts, this effort is expected to expand the various farms and consequently the yields of the 2023 farming season. Charity Ashki, NTA News. And now let's join Ibado, where Charity is standing by to keep us up to speed with happenings from that zone. Charity, it's over to you. Welcome to Ibadan and still talking agricultural matters as part of the federal government's projection in enhancing sustainable food production in the country. The National Committee on Naming, Registration and Release of Crops livestock breeds and fisheries has released 10 crop varieties of high yield and tolerant resistance. Kayo Deoladoshi reports that release of the varieties was held at the National Center for Genetic Resources and Biotechnology NAGRA in Ibadan. 12 crop varieties were submitted by researchers and agricultural institutes for consideration, out of which 10 were recommended for certification, registration, and release. The newly registered seeds are based on early maturity, tolerance to soil predators, and high productivity. A lot is expected from us, and we thank God by His grace, with the support of the federal government, that we have been able to chunk out this number to the end users. With the federal government's effort to boost wheat production in the country, four new varieties were released. What is the economic value of these varieties to the Nigerian farmers? We are also developing various technologies for increased yield, and not only for increased yield, but also for value addition to wheat product. As at last two to three years, we had reached six tons per hectare. Now we have hit seven tons per hectare. And once you want to improve production, you have to rely on two things, the landmass expansion and higher yielding varieties. And that's what we are offering to farmers at this stage. Quality parameters of these varieties are outstanding and the milling industry is keenly interested in making sure these varieties get to Nigerian farmers and they cultivate. The committee was unanimous that the newly released varieties will boost economy of the sector and food security in Nigeria. In Ibado, Kado Ladoshu, NTA News. Away from agricultural matters, let's move on. Leaders of the National Association of Road Transport Workers in Southwest converged on Oshobo, Oshun State Capital, for a crucial meeting aimed at ensuring that peace reigns in the region. Femi Afariogun reports that representatives of the union from all the six southwest states of Nigeria attended the meeting. At the meeting, the chairman of NURTW from all the six southwest states under Zone 2 declared their total support for President Bola Ahmed Tinobu, promising to promote peace in the zone. When you look at the current situation, ever since the assumption of office of uh, our current president, hardly will you see anywhere our people are carrying cutlasses. That is, it is that stand 
that is affecting us generally in the southwest now. They, however, cautioned people paraded themselves as leaders of the union with the intent of fomenting trouble among members in the zone to stop forthwith. We hereby call on them to desist from impersonating a duly recognized organ of the union in the southwest, as this is not only a misnomer but a criminal act, and henceforth we will not shy away in instituting court action against them. They appealed to all members aggrieved by any action to channel it through appropriate quarters rather than spreading campaign of calumny against the leadership of the union. In Oshogbo Femi Afariogo, NTN News. That's a contribution on Nationwide from Ibadan. It's back to Olajide in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Many thanks, Charity from Ibadan. And, uh, the need for continuous sensitization and awareness to stop some practices measured against widows in some communities in Nigeria resonates as NGOs and civil society organizations join the global community to commemorate 2023 International Widows Day, with empowerment of widows being the focus of the celebration. Integrating widows in governance and nation building is not left out. Ngozi Technikyo completes the story. Empowering widows is at the center of the day celebration. Integrating widows in governance and nation building is also a key focus. The aim is to reduce stigmatization and rituals associated with the death and burial of a spouse. To achieve this, gender experts are offering enlightenment talks to the widows. When you see something, say something. And when you say something, the law will protect you if need be. Say you wear the court case, protection day under this law for you. Experts are teaching the widows how to exercise their rights in the case of denial from the late husband's family, among other forms of infringements. Periodic assistance and empowerment from certain NGOs and good spirited individuals are also putting smarts on the faces of the widows. God connects me to this commission. He has been faithful to us. When there is nothing, we call him, he answers, he responds to us. Government should see a way of giving them opportunity to give them soft loan to help them into farming. Even some of them who are into uh, uh, skill acquisition, government should give them also loan in order to help them to start. The theme for this year's celebration is innovation and technology for gender equality. This event is an opportunity to reaffirm the commitment of many organizations in the country to the cause of widows and gender equality. Ngozi Technico, NTA News. To complement the efforts of the federal government in meeting the immediate needs of internally displaced persons in Nigeria, some humanitarian groups visited an IDP camp in Durumi, Area 1, Abuja, to donate relief materials. Elizabeth Amorari reports that the beneficiaries advocate improved living conditions in IDP camps. To live a normal life in an IDP camp where the basic needs of life are hard to come by is a situation that leaves one with nothing to be desired. However, the presence of visitors often raises hope. A demonstration of love that gives them more hope that they have not been abandoned and will one day return to their ancestral homes. Three months back, we didn't see any stranger come to this camp. It's only today. And even yesterday I prayed, I said to God, make me remember us again. We are so happy. And I believe that God touched their life. That is why they remember, say, ah, there are some people where they need. Solving challenges of displacement arising from insecurity, the donors say should be a collective responsibility to reduce the burden of IDPs on government. I would like them to champion um, community policing because every individual knows who and who lives in the community and you know what their character is all about. If we engage our traditional leaders, they can help you fight this insecurity. Well-meaning Nigerians should look into helping people at the IDP camp or just anybody around you. They however urged relevant authorities to provide schools, hospitals and empowerment tools to IDPs to make life comfortable as they look forward to their return. Elizabeth Omori.
NTA News. Sports update is next. Oyo and Delta State men and women have emerged champions of the 2023 3x3 wheelchair basketball national championship held at the Outdoor Sports Hall of Alake Sports Center in Abe Okuta, Ogo State. Oyo defeated Lagos 10-1 to lift the trophy in the men's category, while Delta defeated Oyo 3-2 to clinch the women's category. Osho came from three points down to beat Abuja 7-5 to seal the third position in the men's category, while Imo State beat Kwara 5-1 to settle for third position in the women's category. Two Nigerian women arm wrestlers, courtesy of their performances at the 12th African Arm Wrestling Championships in Accra, Ghana, have qualified for the 2023 World Combat Games scheduled for Saudi Arabia later in the year. The athletes Muazi Zanu in the 55kg class defeated Ghana's Rachel Lankai in a playoff battle, while Olubisi Oyewusi qualified for the World Combat Games in the women's 90kg class. Team Nigeria with 247 points finished overall third at the just-concluded 12th African Arm Wrestling Championships in Accra, Ghana, with 33 medals consisting 10 gold, 9 silver and 14 bronze. And finally to boxing, Argentina's Fernando Martinez beat Jed Bonia to retain his IBF World Super Flyweight title in Minneapolis. With the win, Martinez is now unbeaten in 16 fights, while Bonia lost for the first time in his professional career. With sports updates, Olale Kan Kilajolu, NTA News. And that's it on Nationwide. Many thanks for being a part of it. I am a large day below. NTA, you can't be dodged. The invention of the telephone by Alexandra Graham Bell took customer service to another level. Without telephones, modern businesses could not build quality relationships with their customers. But customer service has evolved beyond just a telephone conversation. As we now have working departments, email support systems, live chat support, self-service content, and even forums. When a client feels unsatisfied with the level of service and goods provided, he seeks the intervention of a customer service representative. Customer service is the assistance and advice provided by a company to those people who buy or use its products or services. Each industry requires different levels and forms of customer service. Patronizing a place of business one is expectant to get the best. It is assumed that the business place is also prepared to give its customers top standard treatment so as to keep the customer coming back or recommend the business to potential customers. In order for this to happen, certain qualities must be possessed by staff of its company. Although large businesses have a customer service desk, it is always recommended that all staff possess qualities which include professionalism, patience, and a people-first attitude. With these qualities, the customer service representative uses them to help customers with complaints and questions, give customers information about their products and services, take orders, and process returns. By helping customers understand the product and answering questions about their reservations, they are sometimes seen as having a role in sales or the provision of services. We all have stories to tell. The small boy kicked me to open fire. So I said, okay, you can cross the right hand. So that's what how my right hand was cut off. He's working with Clutchy with which he had that it was a that guy, no. He's he's not <laughs> he's not an ordinary eye. No, he's not an eye. Juju use Marie's wife. It all depends on how I handle my story. 
and how you're able to handle your own story. It is what you decide in your mind that determines you, not your situation. I don't hear where, but what I'm saying is we are better together. Welcome to Against All Odds on the Nigerian Television Authority, a program that brings to your doorstep the lives of persons with disability. This is the network service of the NTA. Yeah, welcome to Abrahamic Mission. Abrahamic Mission is a program that is designed to enlighten us about the two main religions we have in this country. But by God's grace, very soon, we're going to have uh, the third leg of the Abrahamic Mission, which is the Jewish religion. But presently, today, we have in the studio the a Christian leader and an Islamic leader. We have uh, Father Emmanuel Onamba of St. Cyril Catholic Church in Kado. Father, you are welcome to today's episode. Thank you, sir. And we also have uh, Imam Dr. Kabir, Muhammad Kabir Adam. His Imam is from the National Mosque here in Abuja. Imam, you are welcome. Thank you very much. And my name is Imam Fuad Adeyemi, and together we'll be discussing common concepts which we have started uh in the in the previous uh, episode what is common concept perhaps many of us don't know that islam christianity and judaism is from the same source and there are so many things that is common to this to, to these three main religion but many of us because of ignorance we never knew that most of these things are actually the same thing perhaps it might be changed a bit probably in the in the era of pronunciation or because of uh, relationship that each of these religions have gotten where they are mainly domiciled. But don't worry, we are going to be part of this. You will see so many other things that has uh, joined us together as people of faith. Uh, but before that, let me quickly begin with the messages that we have received in the previous days. This man writes, he said, Good evening, moderator and members of the religious panel. God bless you guys for this educative program. I wish most religious leaders could be watching this so they should stop misleading and causing division in the hearts of many unknowledgeable people and stop forcing people to join one religion or the other. People should have free will to belong to a particular religion and practice and practice it freely without any persecution as enshrined in the national constitution. Thank you once again brothers in the studio from austin damangasa abuja uh, this man continues said men of god i appreciate your wonderful enlightenment work before i was condemning islamic religion but with this great enlightenment i am convinced that we are all worshiping the same god but only in a different way may god bless you people in jesus name uh, i think these are the things in my introduction that many of us because of our uh, uh, ignorance and we can't believe anybody is because we don't know by the time we know we discover that anybody that is abusing the other one he needs to go and test his brain that whether there is a challenge there or not but let me continue this man also right he said good evening to you all and happy new year to to you all once again he said this program has really inspired me in all ramification if this program has been in early 80s and 90s the disparity between the Christianity and Islam would not have been much. Sovio Otobong Jeremiah from Uyo. Uh, uh, Mr. Otobong Jeremiah, we appreciate you and we thank you for this. But I think there is a Chinese proverb that says the best time to do something was yesterday. The next best time to do it is today, which we have started. I think this is also something. So we thank you. Just as the saying, <laughs> better late than never. Okay. So the moment we start, we can catch up before it's too late. Imam, you have any? Uh, no, I, 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 I agree. Of course. Okay. 
uh, in my time, some we used to have a, a member of a state assembly. We always call him I concur, but your own is not like that. People who are listening, they know the town that I'm talking about. How this man right? He said, the family of engineer Tudo from Ukum Benue appreciate NTA to this knowledge. To those that don't know, thank you. I don't know what he meant. Uh, this one say, good job, sir. I only, I only, I humbly beg in common concept of the religion to please <coughs> explain Surah 3, verse 42. I don't know why Imam wants to so quickly, but you have to be very brief and direct with him. <coughs> Surah 3, that is Surah 3. Uh, no? That is Surah 3, Ali Imran. Ali Imran. Yeah. Mm. Verse what? Verse 42. You say Anthony Obi from Lagos State. Verse 42. Mm. Mm -hmm. Can I go? Please. Uh, the, the the verse says, uh, and remember when the angel said, O oh Mary, verily Allah has chosen you, purified you from polycythism, and chosen you above the women of the alam, which means mankind and yes, jinn. Yes. That's the meaning of the verse. Can you explain it briefly? So this verse number 42 of Surah of chapter 3, as he mentioned, mm. is telling everybody in the world mm. that Mary, the mother of Jesus, mm. was chosen by God himself. Okay, leave it like that. You know why? Yes. We are still going to talk about Mary. Definitely. The, when we move yeah. to the next part. Yes. Uh, I consciously uh, sent that uh, message because very soon we are going to introduce what we call scriptural reasoning it's a new concept that we want to bring into abrahamic mission we call it scriptural reasoning we will pick a verse from the quran the pastor or the christian clergy will explain how he understands it the same thing imam will explain it then we will pick a, a verse from the bible the pastor will explain it to us then the imam will explain how he understands it Perhaps when we begin to have in, uh, inroad into our main books, we'll be able to understand it the more. It's a new cause that is gaining currency in the world. Now, they call it scriptural reasoning. But don't be... I just consciously brought it so that we will we, we begin to have what... Uh, to have an inroad to what I describe as scriptural reasoning. But no problem. Do you... What you read? Did you listen to that verse? Exactly. I remember we, we talked about... It. You, you quoted exactly that verse. The last time we, we we started discussing about the similarities and uh, that's exactly what we believe and that's why we honor mary in our church as the mother of jesus and, and we also talked about messiah al masih al yeah. yes. so he's just repeating exactly what we like believe. somebody mentioned i don't know what that is mom he said uh, mary in islam she's the first lady of islam if that's the first person the first woman to be recognized in islam Exactly. The person said it was Mary, based on this verse. Exactly. Yeah. And I remember you saying that she was the only woman mentioned in the Quran, and no, ha who which was, has a chapter yes, yes, in the Quran. Exactly. Okay. So thank you so much. I think we are getting there. This man says, uh, "Good evening, everybody. Please, I want to know if al is in the Quran or part of Islam." Thank. I'm Osinachi from Enugu. <laughs> well, uh, al majri is a societal uh, name because I understand what he means by al majri is those who are begging on the street. Begging on the street. That is not part of Islam. Islam okay. did not encourage anybody to go out for begging. Islam says go and walk and earn. Mm -hmm. That's what Islam says. Okay. Christianity says exactly the same thing. He who does not work should not eat. Uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. So, exactly. so I think is is getting much more uh, livelier. Uh, this man right. He said I couldn't leave my seat since I tuned into this channel. This is one of the best way to save ourselves from the mess we have find ourselves in all nation of the world. The Abrahamic Mission. What a wonderful program. God bless you for this wonderful program. Wow. It's a mind-blowing education for a time like this. My question is, it is, is it right for my boyfriend to take a gift on his birthday from me in Islam? Thank you from Olayinka who says on five. 
<laughs> what what why not somebody I, is, I also want you to call okay quickly somebody maybe. try trying to be part of your happiness mm. so of course islam always encourages people to associate themselves with those who are their loved ones or neighbors when it comes to uh, 